welcome back to Aunt Susie's Kitchen. Today we're going to be spending a lot of time in the kitchen, so I thought while we were, I would let you in on one of my most requested recipes, and that's roasted red peppers. This one's super simple, so don't look for anything special or magical. Here we go. So I've got a couple roasted peppers. This probably is going to be enough to make enough if you have like a small party, maybe, you know, eight or ten people. Um, so basically all that I've done here is I've taken my peppers, wash them and dry them. I have a little bit of canola oil and I'm going to just lightly brush the outside skin of all of these peppers. I want to make sure that I get every single part. Make sure you get around the stem and make sure you get the base and the bottom and, and get it, get everything. Um, the reason why it's important to use the oil and make sure you cover them evenly is that in order for these to have the effect that you want, what you're looking for is when we put them inside the convection oven on a very high temperature, we're looking for the skins to start to boil and broil to the part where they come away from the flesh. And if you don't use the oil, it takes longer to accomplish this. And obviously the longer they stay in the oven, the more chance you run that the flesh overcooks. So we use a little bit of canola. It helps the temperature on the skins come up to a really high temperature quickly while not overcooking the skin. So we've got all of these peppers done. Very simple. I have a little bit of sea salt here. I'm just gonna give them a little sprinkle. Again, uh, we flavor uh, the outside, even though we're not gonna eat the skin, the flavor will permeate, and we wanna make sure that we've got them all uh, evenly coated with just a little bit of salt. We're gonna go ahead and put these in a convection. I've started my convection. If you don't have a convection oven, it's fine. You can do them in your oven. Turn the broiler part on your oven on and put your rack so that it's about four to six inches away from the hot flame. You just have to watch them a little more frequently. Instead of being able to put them in and come back in 10 or 15 minutes and turn them, you might have to turn them every four or five minutes. So make sure you put your oven light on and you keep your eyes peeled and listen for your smoke alarm because that's usually the indicator that you let them go too long. But if you have a convection oven, that de definitely is your best bet. I have my convection set on 375. I'm gonna go ahead and put these in. I'm gonna let them cook for about initially 12 minutes because the peppers are gonna to start to come up the temperature. Once they come up to temperature after about 12 minutes, I'm going to start turning them on each side and I'm going to let the temp, uh, I'm going to let them go ahead and continue to cook. It's going to be faster after that because once they come to temperature, obviously the skins are going to cook qu more quickly as we turn them. So when these are ready at the first uh, mark, like maybe 10 or 12 minutes, I'll come back, show you what they look like. We'll give them a toss and we'll keep going until they're done and then we'll go over the rest of the ingredients and put them all together. Okay, so this has been about 13 minutes and you see how on top how the skins have lifted up off of the flesh. The color's starting to get nice and golden. This is exactly what we're looking for. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna give them a turn. I'm gonna bring them to a part, obviously, that hasn't been cooked at all yet. I'm gonna put them back inside the convection oven. And now, because they're warm and they've come up the temperature, I'm gonna check on these in about five minutes. Okay, we'll be back. Okay, here we go. So, you hear it sizzling? So as you see, we had these in the convection oven. We turned them about three or four times at four or five minute intervals after the initial 13 minutes. And now you can see the skins are separating from them, but they're really not complete, uh, completely where we need them to be to the point where we could peel the skins off of them now. The skins are still a little bit attached. So here's what we're gonna do. This is the way my mom always did it and her mom, so this is the way I do it. I just take a regular um, brown bag from the grocery store and I put it inside a plastic bag from the grocery store. Then I take the peppers and again, these literally just came out of the oven, so they are very hot. I put them inside the bag. Turn around, give you a little view of that. There they are inside the bag. Okay, and now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take the bag and I'm going to close it up in the front. Up, close it up and I'm going to take the plastic. I'm going to completely cover the bag with the plastic and now what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to create inside an environment where all of the steam uh, is inside the bag. Obviously it's releasing because it's very hot but it's going to stay inside the paper and it's going to stay because of the plastic is going to hold it all in there and I'm going to actually just put these now on the counter and let them sit for about an hour until they're cool enough for me to touch. And when they're finished, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you how nice and soft, actually you're gonna see when we take them out of the bag, they're no longer gonna hold their shape. 
they're actually going to deflate. What was keeping them um, holding their shape was the steam inside them. But now that the flesh is cooked and the skin is soft, they're no longer going to hold that nice shape. You'll see when we take them out, they're going to be flat now. Okay, so we'll be back in about an hour. Okay, we're back. So it's actually, it's been about two hours. And um, these are cooled. So I'm going to open them up. And I just want to show you on the inside what they look like. This is the bag that we have. And seal the condensation, stayed inside and great. That's exactly what you want. That's what keeps all of the... Um, you know, all of the steam inside the bag and keeps them uh, cooking all the way. All right, so this is what I do basically. I just take one out. I take out this piece here. I kind of use my fingers like a little scissor because I don't want that piece there because that's that um, white part on top is very bitter. And look at the skin. Look how it's just falling off. See that? It just completely came right off. And now all we're going to do is pull the pepper apart and I'm just kind of using my fingers to uh, get the seeds out you don't really want to wash the peppers at this point but you just want to kind of wipe all the seeds down okay so I'm gonna go ahead and finish doing the rest of these peppers and uh, in the meantime you see over here I've got some fresh basil from my garlic I have some uh, I'm sorry some fresh basil from my garden garlic I have a little bit of red wine vinegar and some olive oil and of course some salt and when I come back I'm gonna just show you how we quickly season them okay so we have all of the peppers cleaned I took my basil I chopped it up we're gonna just take it and throw it right in here oh it smells so good especially right out of the garden nothing beats herbs right out of the garden this is our garlic we're just gonna throw that in there too okay so now I can't tell you measurements so don't ask me okay this is all by eye. We just put a little drizzle of olive oil on top. Okay, a little bit of salt, salt to taste. I mean, you know, you like more salt, you put more salt. You like less salt, you put less salt. And then I like to use a little bit of red wine vinegar. So some people will say that this is more of a marinade than, um, than anything, and that's okay. Call it what you want, but that's how I like it. And then I just take a spoon. Let me just grab a big spoon here. Give them a toss, look at that. Oh, it smells so good too. Now, if you're gonna make this for family, for a party, for whatever, um, make it the day ahead. Because the longer this sits, the better it tastes. These flavors just come out, oh my goodness. By the time you get to the bottom and you go to finish it, oh my goodness, you need a big chunk of Italian bread and you need to just dip it in all of the juices that are gonna form on the bottom and it's just absolutely delicious. So. That's it, there you have it. Roasted red peppers, there's no mystery to them. Uh, make them for your family, they'll be glad you did. And check us out on YouTube and come back and see us again because there's always something good cooking in Aunt Susie's Kitchen.